Good day, ma'am. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Did you know that Jesus loves you? Yes, I oh, do. That's wonderful. Well, then, if I could just take a few short minutes of your time. I'm really busy. No, thank you very it much. It really but... would be worth your while. I... Yes, no, but what are you doing? Get out of here. Just don't make any sounds. Don't do anything that would upset me and ruin my train of thought. Just put the key into the ignition and back out. I keep telling you, Hooker, your car is a certified clunker. You need to trade it before it dies under you. Last few days of the month, car salesmen who haven't met their quotas will be ripe for that last sale or two. Right. Take a slow day. Just before closing, empty showroom is a good sign. Are we buying a car or are we holding them up? Hooker, I'm sitting here pouring out a lifetime of knowledge and you're making light. Lifetime? My tires are older than you, Junior. Units in the vicinity of 4 out of 30. They're playing our song. A possible attack in progress at the parking lot, 422 North Pine. <laughs> There's also an ambulance en route to 422 North Pine. That's four blocks away. Let's go for it, Eddie. You got it. Oh, my goodness. Something must have happened over there. Oh, I'm sure it's something serious. That was our bus. I just saw them sitting in the car and he hit her a couple of times. Get that camera out of here, please. Tracy Hill, Channel 6 News. I don't care about Walter Cronkite. Back off. Just, just sit there. Excuse me. Baby, baby, Eddie, he robbed me. My man, he said thank you very much for your time. God loves you. And then he handed me that. was on its way. Another Bible. It's him. Sergeant, is this another attack by the Bible mugger? Uh, no comment. That's all we seem to be getting from your people. It's no comment and no progress. Let's get that camera out of here, please. Eddie, you keep rolling. This woman has been brutally beaten. You found the Bible, which is the signature of the mugger who's been terrorizing this. I said, get the camera out of my face. <sighs> all right, Eddie, pull the plug. He likes us much. Well, with you, that's understandable. Me, I'll grow on him. Character, a religious nut who likes to abuse women, or is he just uh, out for the money? Oh, you figure it out. He beats him up, gives him a sermon, and then takes an offering of cash or jewelry, whatever they got. Then leaves him a Bible, all in the name of God. Talk about weird. Freak city. Let's get this creep off the streets and then let the doctors figure it out. Captain, there have been four attacks on women in your precinct by some psycho who leaves Bibles behind. You have an M.O. and you have a description from each of the victims. So what exactly is happening with this case? Well, as soon as we have something on the muggings, Tracy, I promise I'll give you a first shot. Oh, that'd be super. But you know, I've just had a flash on what I'd really like, what could be the core of our documentary. 
I'd like to ride in one of your patrol cars on a regular watch. I don't see any problem with that. Oh, good. Good. Um, with those two officers, Hooker and Romano, isn't it? Well, Hooker and Romano aren't exactly what you'd call the police department's public relations experts. I recall a controversy when uh, Sergeant Hooker was disciplined for a shooting incident, but he also has, and correct me if I'm wrong, a Medal of Valor and an impressive list of commendations. Believe me, you'd be wasting your time. Captain, we're shooting an hour of tape. Now, as attractive as I'm going to make you look, it can't be all you. Hooker? Romano? Sergeant Hooker, Officer Romano, Tracy Hill. Men. Yes, we have. I apologize if we got in your way today. That was my fault. I just have this natural instinct for fishing. When you try it again with me, you'll be looking for a new creek. See what I mean? Yeah. Don't mind my partner, Miss Hill. I caught that piece you did on youth gangs, and I really liked it. It had a nice perspective. Well, thank you. I have an even better angle on you and Sergeant Hooker. Yeah? You're gonna make us stars? Oh, it could be. Weren't you recruited in that new on-the-job training program that Sergeant Hooker taught at the Academy? I'm still part of it in the probation phase of my training. Living at the Academy barracks till I put in enough duty for graduation. You see? That's perfect. I can use all of that in my story. What are we talking about here, Captain? Well, Miss Hill's doing a news documentary. She'll be riding with you and Romano tomorrow. Captain Sheridan, it's rough enough out there on the streets without being anchored with some news hemp. No offense. I'll bet. Well, this was approved downtown. You're being told, Hooker, not asked. Now, I'll leave the three of you to work it out. You know, if you'll just cooperate, life could be a lot easier. Your life, not mine. When we hit those streets, Miss Hill, it's real. And it's rough. That's a TV road show. I guess when you get to know him, he's just a pussycat. Well, if I ever really get to know him, I'll be sure to let you know. Executive game streak. <laughs> oh, well, if I'm not mistaken, Romano, your little bit of heaven just glided through the door. Uh, I'll be in my private booth. Uh, listen, if I have to split, I don't want to leave you stranded. How's your turkey car running? Like me, after a little oil, smooth. Great. It'll be running nice and good for Melvin. Melvin? He's a car dealer friend of mine. He's going to fix you up. I don't want to be fixed up. Trust me, partner. Trust me. Hi, Vince. Am I late? Not at all. Step into my private booth. <laughs> Jerry, hit me again. Make it two. That's still spoken for. Well, hello to you, too, Hooker. Oh, I'm fine. Just fine. Thank you. Well, now that we're old, dear friends, I'm interested in this mugger case. What can you tell me about it? Why don't you ask the detectives assigned to it? Thank you. You never have seen any of my work, have you? I live in a fringe area. I don't get Channel 6. Well, how do you know that I'm not as good a reporter as you think you are a cop? It's the media, right? You don't think it's reliable? Hmm. It's reliable. Oh, too reliable. Numbingly predictable. Predictable? Sure. As soon as the latest axe murderer is captured, a swarm of reporters converges on the neighbors, the milkman, assorted distant relatives. You knew him? What was he like? 
And the neighbor, uh, who's flattered to be interviewed, says, oh, he was a regular fella. He had a smile on his face for everybody. I can't believe that he killed all those people. Well, a lot of people think that we do a pretty good job under a lot of pressure. Well, maybe the right. What can I tell you? You know, if you've been burned, Hooker, I am sorry, but it was not by me. Listen, baby, you already got what you want. You're riding with us. So why don't you leave it lay, huh? You know I can read you like a book. Yeah. Yeah. A regular nightcap every PM in here since you were a rookie. Same stool because you're superstitious. A double because it gets you there faster. And you're a man who doesn't like to waste time. Born and raised within 10 miles of the precinct, but you still don't have any roots. And all your friends are cops because you don't trust anybody else. And you're closer to your partner than you will be to any woman ever. Divorced. Probably because the woman couldn't handle standing in line second to the department. Or waiting for a 2 a.m. phone call telling her that you've been blown away. How am I doing so far? Fair. Fair? Just fair? My batting average is usually higher than that. Fair. We're a girl from Cincinnati. Or is it Cleveland? No matter. What's important is you made it from the small town to the big time, chalked up some impressive credits, and you're within shouting distance of a network job. You're a feminist, but a realist. You'll have a double shot with a cop to get an angle when you'd rather have a glass of white wine. Good year. You're single, but you live alone because relationships can get in the way of a career. Watch Barbara Walters' tapes every weekend. Religiously send your press clippings home to mom and dad and the two sisters. And you know that a story about cops would be dynamite. Because it's high drama, life and death. Rating points. Excuse me. I gotta get going. I don't wanna miss the ball game. On radio. Hooker. It's St. Louis, and it's one brother and one sister. Cops and robbers isn't a game for me, Miss Hill. I've seen too much life and death. Too many alcoholic cops because they're shaking inside. Too many divorces and suicides because of stress. Too many good men given a cop's funeral because some unfeeling, unthinking scum pulls a trigger on them. next to her on the seat. Anybody see the suspect? Just her. Male Caucasian, blonde hair, 5'11", 150, was wearing a yellow windbreaker. Appeared out of nowhere, disappeared the same way. A yellow windbreaker? What? I think I just saw him at the bus stand. <laughs>
That's him. That's the man. Are you sure, Miss Thomas? It's a face I'll have nightmares over. I'm positive. Okay. Yeah, no question. That's the man I chased. And lost. Well, excuse me. I was off duty at the time. Couldn't find a telephone booth to change in. Step over here. How about the Bible, Jackson? It's the same as before, sir. Partial prints. Nothing we could ID. What about the publisher? Where and how was it purchased? The biggest volume is sold through a mail order house in Phoenix. I gave you everything but the license number in the cab the suspect took off in. The cab company dispatcher said that none of his cabs were logged in anywhere near the location at the time you claimed. Cool it, Jackson. All right, Jackson, I want a full run on the sketch and all the particulars, and I want it distributed to all units immediately. Yes, sir. Hooker? Yes, sir. You and Romano were supposed to be on the streets 20 minutes ago. Yes, sir. One of Mickey's hands must be slow. Sergeant, could I get a copy of that composite? Oh, the composite is given out by division. We could drop you off if you think you're going to miss something. Not on your life. My equipment's already in your car. Not all of it, Miss Hill. Not all of it. Romano, was that a compliment or just a chauvinist dig? I'm not sure. But Hooker is an acknowledged expert on uh, equipment. this Bible mugger who's been terrorizing this city. Sergeant Hooker, do you have a theory on that? You mean his psychological motivation, his sociopathic patterns, his messed up childhood, whether or not he resented his mother? Then you don't agree with the psychological profile that was drawn up by the detectives. I agree with anything that'll help stop what's happening out here. But most perpetrators do what they do because they hate, they want. They do things to other people because it's easier to rob them than it is to work. Four out of 30. Four out of 30. See the man. 686 Longview. Ridgewood Cleaners. Regarding an abandoned vehicle. Four out of 30. Roger. <laughs> This car's been here since the day that woman was attacked. I didn't want to bother you with it, but when I thought about this mugger, how he appears out of nowhere, and then he disappears without a trace, You did the right I... thing, Joe. Thank you. Don't touch it. It's locked over here. Well, it's unlocked here. But we don't go in. Why? No warrant. Does that upset you? It's the law. I mean, does it bother you that the mugger was as good as in your grasp last night, and you lost him? Now there may be a clue in this car, but the detectives take over. They get the glory, you get the streets. You writing a book? I'm interested in what's behind that wall you put up. One, six, eight, one, six, four, two, four, Adam, 30, Roger. Vehicle is registered to Dixon Rent-A-Car. I got a hold of L90 on TAC-2. He ran it down with Dixon. The guy who took it never returned it. Fits our composite like a glove. Name and address? Bert Clark. Showed an Arizona license and a Phoenix address. The Bibles were purchased in Phoenix. Yeah. We'll impound the car with a hold for prints. But I don't need a warrant to know it's for real. How can you be sure? On the floor, in the rear. There's a Bible.
Officer Walker. You know, I've been thinking. We saw the suspect at the bus stop, and he split in the cab. Maybe that's part of his M.O. I want to talk to the cab company, find out why Jackson struck out. Well, that Phoenix name and address of the DMV. Excuse me. Thank you. You know, I never did ask you why you wanted to be a cop. It's just something I do. I don't try and analyze it. Maybe you should. Hey, lady, I'm a garbage collector. I collect it and I dump it. I file my report and I never look back. I don't believe a word of that because Romano's already told me how much you care and your record shows it, but I won't push it. What's your next step? Next step, lunch. Good idea. I have more questions I want to ask you about the Muggers case. Oh, good. Where are we eating? Across the street. Great sushi joint. Oh, oh good sushi. Eddie, come on. Let's yeah. go. Hooker! Hey, Hooker, you're not leaving me here. Why not? You've had your ride, shot your tape. Not enough. I want more. Try the squid. Hooker! Hooker! Excuse me, I don't mean to start you, but may I talk to you for just a few minutes? Well, Do you know that I'm Jesus sorry, I'm on my you? way to my doctor. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to keep you, but I'm afraid you're going to get a little late. Just calm down. Don't make any loud noises. I'll be very used this way. Come on, let's get in the car. Oh. Come on. Come on, lady. Come on, come on. Get in. Get in. Get in. Close the door, please. Very good, very good. My medicine. All I want to do is talk to you. What are you doing? My, my, my medicine. Oh, my pills. I need my pills. Pills, of course. My pills. Don't you understand that that's Satan's way? My pills. Do you see this Bible? Now, I'm going to really have to show you how to repent. My pills. That's Satan's way. Lady, are you listening to me? Lady! Hey, what's the matter with you? Yeah. Sergeant Hooker, this is Officer Romano. So? Your dispatcher tells us that you were working in the downtown area the night that woman was assaulted. Hey, man, I already talked to the detectives. I told them I was nowhere near that section. You had a fare you delivered two blocks from there a half hour before the attack. Yeah. And I ran off to the airport, checked my logbook. Well, I don't think so. Billy, you have a history of on-the-job drinking. And I think you had a few belts, you pulled over next to the construction site and grabbed a few Z's. I don't know what you're talking about. I saw a capital cab take a suspect away from that site. And I'm laying money that you were the driver. I remember you now. Eight, nine years ago, dealing pills and coke to kids, wasn't it? I did my time. I'm clean. You give it to me, Bill. You give it to me straight, or I'll pull your package and I'll roust you till you lose your hack license for good. Look, I'm behind in my payments. They're repossessing my car. I needed the bread. 1025. You're logged out for a trip to the airport, but actually you're hibernating at a construction site. This man comes over the fence. He's in a yellow windbreak. And you take him for a fare. He gave me a hundred up front to get him gone from there, and another C-note to keep my mouth shut after I let him off. This dude is messing up a lot of women, friend. Don't you read the papers? Like I said, I needed the bread. I knew I'd get fired if I admitted I was there and not at the airport. Where'd you let him off? Well, 
bus stop. Corner of 8th and Broadway. This is where I first saw the suspect. Same B bus line, runs right past the shopping center where that woman was attacked. What are you, some kind of expert on the B-Bus? Yeah, I had to take it every day when my transmission went up. Yeah? Well, Melvin will take care of that. Told him we'd be by tomorrow. Is he also going to pay my alimony when I blow it on the floor on the floor? Relax. Easy payment plan. Right. Our man likes the B-Bus. So let's follow the route. See where it leads. Take a look. They got. It looks like another baffle job. Well, this time it went too far. Is she dead? The pill container on the floor is labeled Digitalis. Now it appears that she had a heart attack and. Couldn't get to the pills. Then it's murder. Who said blue suits are dumb? You get any word from Phoenix on those Bibles? Two dozen of them were shipped last June to a Bert Clark at a post office box in Sky Vista. Where's your TV, pal, hooker? I ordered the legs and the fast mouth. You got something against legs? She'd been pumping us for days about the mugger case. She gets a chance. I think she's going to do a hatchet job on whoever's within striking distance. Let's go. So while the city remains terrorized, while the latest mugging has culminated in death to its helpless female victim, we still have some old line cops who work in an antiquated fashion. This is Sergeant T.J. Hooker, the officer who pursued and lost the mugger. You mean his psychological motivation, his sociopathic patterns, his messed up childhood, whether or not he resented his mother? Then you don't believe in the psychological profile that was drawn up by the detectives. Hey, I, I agree with anything that'll help stop what's going on out here, but most perpetrators do what they do because they hate, they want. They do things to other people because it's easier to, to rob them than it is to work. That's a wonderful, tough law and order speech, but it's just more words. And as you and your cohorts continue to fumble this mugger case, we have learned exclusively that fingerprints lifted from one of the rental cars found abandoned identify an Arlen Williams, alias Burt Clark of Phoenix, Arizona, as a prime suspect. That report just came in our water. How did she get it so fast? Why don't you ask Hooker? We've also learned that Williams, found not guilty by reason of insanity in several brutal assaults on Phoenix women, had been confined at Phoenix Mental Hospital before being released in an outpatient treatment program. That, that's wrong! They were the crazy ones. And now our special in-studio guest here to discuss this case Dr. Walter Forbes, can you give us a psychological profile for this Bible mugger? Well, there's very little information available at this time. However, I can make some uh, educated uh, speculations. He's probably a very insecure man with low self-esteem. He tries to compensate for this by becoming close to a strong, powerful being like God. <laughs> and the Bible, what about that? Well, he, he leaves the Bible as a symbol of both his uh, religion and his uh, challenging request for the police to stop him. And so, Sergeant Hooker, in spite of your evaluation, we have a sociopathic, sick person walking the streets. This is Tracy Hill, Channel 6 News. She made you look like a grade-A chump.
That's it. Thank you. Hello, Tracy Hill. Miss Hill, is this really you? Yes, it is. Who's this? Miss Hill, this is Harlan Williams. I've been watching you on the television, and uh, I think you misunderstand my work. I think you're such a fine reporter that in order to tell my story properly, you should really know the truth. I think we should talk. Yes, I'm listening. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Not over the phone. You don't have to be afraid. There is a phone booth on the corner of 8th and Maple. I have the number. You be there in an hour, and I'll call you. I'll be there. I want you to tell Gus to hold open the lead for me on the 11 and the art department. I want you to tell him to make blow-ups of everything we've got on Williams, the psychiatric file, everything that works. Hey, you got something, huh? Yeah, sizzling. I'll see you later. You here to give me a ticket, Hooker? No warning. Well, I don't have time for lectures. I'm in what you might call a hurry. You're always in a hurry. I'm so busy being clever, you don't have time to listen. Fine. You're angry because you think that I used you. And maybe I did, because you've never given me the respect that I have earned in this business. The call girl ring in South Beach. I broke that story before any policeman even arrested a single suspect. And the DA used my notes to help prosecute. Drug bust, the Rojan murder case. I have paid my dues, mister, so you stay out of my way before I call a cop. I was wrong to dump you the way I did. And you're just as wrong to pursue what you're doing alone. You're in over your head this time, Tracy. If you have any information, any leads, turn them over to Jackson and Barnes. You'll still get your story. They're worse than you. You guys think that anything in a skirt has the IQ of a turnip. Well, I have my ethics, and I have my integrity, and I do my homework, Hooker. And I don't intend to give anybody else the beat. <laughs> You do have a way with women. Yeah, it's a talent I was born. Let's get out of here before we become another media event. Williams, Clark. Had a post office box at Sky Vista at the end of the B bus run. Detectives have it staked out, so. Now try this one on for size. You know what's on a hill overlooking Sky Vista? A cross, a large cross. Yeah, I know the place. There's an old convent there. I pulled the Williams package, and it didn't hit me until now, but before Williams was committed, he was a caretaker in Phoenix at a convent. <laughs> Williams. You are alone, aren't you? Of course. Um, our deal was a phone call, not this. Well, I thought meeting face to face would be far more enlightening for both of us. Why don't we go someplace where we can be alone? No, th this is, uh, this is isolated enough. I thought you were interested in where I live. Why I have to do what I do. Oh, I am. Yes, of course, I am. I'm... Miss Hill. <sighs> I don't have to tell you about this, do I? I don't want to have to hurt you like the others. Now, why don't we go across the street and get into your car and go someplace where we can be alone? Excuse me, 
your father. Can you help us? Do you recognize this man? Why, oh, yes, that's our caretaker. You'll find his quarters right at the end of the building and up the stairs. Thank you, Father. You're welcome. Look at this. What? He kept a log of his attacks. It's all here, names, dates, the whole mess. Let's call detectives, get this place dusted.
this here. It's all over. You can get out of the bus now. Oh, thank you, officer. I'm sorry, I... Yeah, ethics and integrity are lovely words. But they never want anybody an Emmy, right? I want to apologize to you now. And I'm going to apologize to you tonight on the air. Oh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to miss it. Like I say, I don't get chance six. <laughs> You buy again, Hooker. I'm telling you, now is the time to trade. Before your car gets a year older and the new models come out. Yeah, who, who is this guy? Mel? Uh, he's a buddy of mine. He'd give you a no, square deal. No, no, no I mean, who, who is he? What's he do? What's his background? Hooker, you don't trust anybody. You're just gonna buy a car from the guy, not marry him. I got more miles out of my car than I did my marriage. I like to approach things from that perspective. I'm gonna tell him we're coming over. What have you got to lose? Is this stool taken? It's a free country. You really know how to make a girl feel at home, Hooker. White wine? Or are you still living dangerously? Since I have nothing more to prove, white wine would be nice. Jerry. White wine for the lady. You know, I was a psychology major before I went into journalism. You would have made an interesting class project. Yeah. Why'd you call me? Romano heard your newscast. He said you did what you said you were going to do. And you respect that, so now we can be buddies? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't quite go that far. I just thought somebody ought to straighten out your perceptions of cops. And you're the man to do that, obviously. <laughs> Just don't come on with every story like we're trying to steal our pensions. You'll make a lot more friends. Who does the uh, sports on your newscast? Chuck Murray. Oh, yeah. Good guy. Used to do play-by-play. -play. Yeah. Maybe I'll get my antenna fixed. <laughs> Tracy, nice Hi. to see you. Hi. It's all set. What's all set? I got Hooker lined up with a dude who's going to give him the deal of a lifetime and a new Porsche. A Porsche? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you should wait. You might get a better deal through the state. Yeah? Yeah, we just did some story on a guy who's selling stolen Porsches off a lot on Maine. Real sleazy character. What's his name? Um, Delvin, Kelvin, um... Uh, Melvin? Melvin? <laughs>